Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. And on today's episode, we're out in South Dakota near Watertown. And what brings me out to this area every year about this time of year is I love fishing these shallow, windswept bodies of water that once were duck sloughs. They're incredibly fertile. They're loaded with very aggressive walleyes. And I love coming out here to fish at this time of the year because I get to use very aggressive presentations. These fish will very often be found very shallow, right on the shorelines, and that means I can pitch plastics and crank crankbaits, and I love catching fish using those aggressive presentations. So stick around, it's Andy Fiolka and I out in slough country in South Dakota near Watertown today on In-Depth Outdoors. Beautiful day, huh? A little wind in South Dakota is a great thing. This is a perfect wind. Hopefully it doesn't blow anymore. I think it's supposed to blow a little more. Off we go. Well, it's pretty easy to know where to decide to go fish. You just follow the wind. <laughs> go fish the windy shoreline, right? That's gonna work out to our benefit, I think, today. Agreed. A little brisk yet, but should warm up nicely. You know, one of the things I love about uh, fishing out here in South Dakota, uh, what once was, you know, duck sloughs, they've swollen uh, and become, you know, pretty sizable lakes, uh, is that in some regard, they're kind of easy to fish. Uh, they're so wind driven. Um, in these shallow lakes, there's not a lot of mid-lake structure. You'll have a, you know, a home for a bar or two in some of them, but for the most part, they're dish bowls. And these fish will very often spend a large portion of the open water season in very shallow water, even when the water temperatures get to a point where in a lot of those natural lakes at home, those walleyes are all gone. Here in South Dakota, you get these winds like we've got today. It doesn't take a lot, but you get a little bit of wind like you're seeing here today. And all you gotta do is just head to the windy side of the lake. And uh, it's amazing what energy a little bit of wave action does to the activity level of these fish. It just, just pumps them right up. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, you get days where there's not a lot of wind and it's calm and the fishing isn't really that good. Uh, fish are still there, but we get a little bit of clear water. It's, it's actually pretty clear, even though it's wind driven and mm -hmm. silty, it's still pretty clear water and these fish just get tough. So uh, you get a little bit of wind and pound into those reeds and rocks and sand and things like that that we're fishing, uh, the fish just go nuts sometimes. So Absolutely. Well, that's what we're hoping for. You know, back home you get those flat calm conditions, we just head to deeper water. For sure. Whereas here there doesn't exist. <laughs> We're fishing most time today, probably in you know two to four foot of water a lot of it. So, which I love catching walleyes. Walleyes get that kind of a knock at times about you know their fight. You catch a five pound walleye in five foot of water, you that's good hang times. On. That's Absolutely. good times. So, we're gonna go downwind. I think we've got two ways we can probably start with this. Uh, stick baits and throwing jigs and plastics, but um, I think with the water temperatures, as cold as they have been, I mean, what people can't see today is that for the last week prior to today, it's just been cold, wet, and miserable, freezing. Miserable spring, really. So I think the fish are gonna be a little bit less active, willing to chase than what we might have if we had, say, 55 degree water temperatures. So for I'm sure. not sure that, that, that jig, you can do what you want. Of course, I got lots of jigs and plastics to share. <laughs> That's where we'll start. Let's do that. Let's get after it here. Oh, so 
to get us rolling here, what we're looking for is we're looking for the deepest water we can find up against some vegetation or timber. Uh, this lake has a lot of both. And when I talk about deep water, it's all relative. <laughs> out here on this lake, four foot of water on the edge of a reed line is deep. Uh, where a lot of what you'll find is that uh, you've got two foot of water just outside the reeds, and that's just not as productive as if you can find a little bit deeper water. There's just something about having two extra foot of water over their heads that make these walleyes really pile up in these areas. So that's what we're on the look for. Uh, we're looking for deeper water, tight to flooded timber, or tight to the edge of this reed line. And right now, uh, underneath my trolling motor, I've got about four and a half feet. That's, that's about as deep as we're likely to find here on this particular lake. Like I said, it's all relative. There you go. Hey, fish on! Looks like the right kind. It feels walleye-like. Walleye-ish? Yeah, it is a walleye, I'm pretty sure. Gee. Nice fish. Oh, yeah! You got, uh, I would try to net him, but the net is under a pile of my stuff. Ah, nice! Good way to start there. That is a great way to start, Mr. Fioka. Pretty one, too. Boy, he definitely ate that. I got the, uh, what What length of moxie is this, James? That's at three and a quarter. Just in the orange tube with the- uh, Orange chartreuse. It's great, great with eighth ounce uh, VMC jig head. We're just kind of pitching it up to these little old reeds from last year. Oh. Oh. And you just got bit off by a pike. Yes, I did. That's a pretty good start to the morning there, Mr. Holst. Well, it's better than mine. As I was basically <laughs> gawking at you and continued to fish my bait back, I had a pike just come up and just destroy I my saw that. jig and plastic. There it goes. Let's do that again. I'm guessing we're going to get to many, many times. All right. Boy, those talons are great. When you get bit off and it's windy and you need to retie, you don't have to dink around. I've never used the talons before. I love them. Oh. <laughs> Fishermen who swear by it. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats, loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price, including a Yamaha VMAX SHO 250 horsepower outboard, Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls, Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 Touch at the dash, and a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at 61495 The new MX2040 priced at 60495 More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. Boom. All right, orange chartreuse it is. Another walleye? Yeah, it's a walleye. Nice fish again, too. Feisty one. They're supposed to be. Nice. Ah, another nice one. Well, James, might be time to put the old moxie on, huh? Yeah, it's always a good idea to kind of play around with colors so you don't lock in on that same one, but I'm not mm -hmm. getting down 3-1 to you or 3 none to you without trying. <laughs> oh. Well, it's not too often the guy in the back of the boat gets to uh, go up on the guy in the front, so I'll take it for now, but I'm certain it'll be short-lived. Uh, very nice fish. That's what we're out here for, so looks like it's going to be a start to a great day. We got a good wind. Um, the fish are up here, they're eating, so uh, 
put this one back and see if we can get some more. There he goes. The water's still pretty cold on the hands this morning. Oh, I bet. He was right off those trees. There he is. Well, I, I don't know. I sure look so. It sure looks like it. I'm going to feel left out of the party if it isn't. <laughs> it feels like a walleye. You want a net, you suppose, just in case? That's a walleye. Switch to the same color Andy was using. Orange chartreuse. I'll get him. I okay. got him, Andy. Switch to that same color as Andy. Boom. Come about 50 feet down that shoreline. My turn. All right, get that guy unplugged there. And it's this caliber of fish that you're gonna just catch in huge numbers out here in South Dakota in these lakes. They will produce big fish, but they are fantastic fisheries at producing fish that are really just prime for the frying pan. I'm not interested in keeping fish today, so we're gonna let that one go. There we go. And here's that bait. Same color that uh, Andy's fishing. I was experimenting with colors a little bit, went with a real natural uh, kind of streak of colors there, run of colors, and just wasn't getting bit. That's that chartreuse orange core. Phenomenal color out here in the Dakotas, anywhere you've got a little bit of color to the water. And that's in the pulsar, that's the paddle tail. Uh, Andy's fishing the uh, version with the auger tail. Fish don't seem to care either way. Really how we're fishing these uh, plastics, we're almost fishing them like we're twitching a jerkbait. Uh, effectively what we're doing is we're fishing these plastics like we're fishing a floating rapala or uh, any kind of jerkbait that you'd fish for smallmouth or walleye. And uh, it effectively becomes just a very subtle and uh, small profiled uh, stick bait. Just give it a little twitches, let it pause, let it sink a little bit, bring it forward, twitch it, pause. Those fish just aren't real aggressive yet. Uh, and that'll happen when you have those cold nights. You get a couple of nights where the temperatures stay in the 50s or even 60s, you come out the next morning and they're gonna want those crankbaits. They'll be all over those cranks. Right now, this jig is a wonderful solution to some lethargic fish. There you go. Andy's into one. <laughs> Doesn't feel very big, but sometimes no. it's hard to tell. At least it's not a pike, right? I don't believe it is. I believe it's a walleye. Well, if we can catch four or five walleyes to every pike, that's just fine. Hard to complain about that. Hey, that's another decent walleye, James. It's a good eater one again. I'll just give him a flip here. My 14, 15 incher. Let him go. He was way, way tight up there. Oh, there's one. Long cast. Oh, nice. I don't know, man. I think we might be in the pike slough. Hard to know. I don't like that kind of language. It's pike not slough? doing any power runs or anything like a pike. It, I, I don't, it's a walleye. Is it? Yes, it's a big walleye. Get the net. <laughs> big walleye, you're not joking. That fish is going nowhere. Yes! Nice job. Score! Look at the chub <laughs> on that thing. I'm gonna get out of your way. There, look at that thing. Hey, you gotta sort through some little ones out here on the prairies to uh, catch a big one. And that is the same recipe here. Still throwing that eighth ounce jig, even though it's pretty windy and fishing that pulsar. I'm gonna go in there with the pliers and see if I can't get that out of there. She's clamped down on it really good right now. There you go. All right. That is a stud of a walleye. You know what? And it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, either she's eating rapidly, massively to fill back up. I mean, look at the belly on that thing. That is a fat walleye. I dig it. We're gonna let her go. That's what brings us out here to South Dakota this time of the year. Getting to pitch little jigs for big walleyes. I feel bad for thinking she was a pike, but you know what? I mean, you, it makes sense. I mean, you'd, after catching 15 two pound walleyes, you'd think that the first big fishy hook is gonna be a big pike, but that made the trip right there. That was awesome. I mean, I've never had a boat with talons on it before. Uh, borrowing this from a friend was the perfect boat to bring out here to fish these sloughs. Uh, Skeeter WX 2040 with two talons. And I tell you what, uh, if I could get these on my big water boat, two of them, uh, I'd be in heaven because being able to just lock that boat down with a push of a button just makes it so much easier. Shadow wrap shad's a jerk bait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued.
like the fishermen who swear by it. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Well, we've had a um, massive change in conditions here. Uh, when you're out in South Dakota and you pray for wind, you gotta be careful, you just might get what you ask for. When we started the day, the forecast was for wind speeds, upper teens at the most. Right now, we're seeing winds gusting to 30, 35 miles an hour. Rarely are we seeing the winds drop below, say about 25 miles an hour. And that has changed everything about the little program we were putting together. Um, the downwind portion of the lake is so mudded up, there's just no way we're gonna catch fish down there. What we've been doing is just working further and further upwind to try to find cleaner water. And really where we're at right now is we are as far upwind as we can get and we're just sandwiched to this shoreline where we found about a 50 foot wide ribbon of slightly cleaner water. We've been able to put some fish in the boat. Uh, the cleaner water is really the key here. There's enough wind, there's enough wave action everywhere on this lake right now. Uh, the key has been just getting away from that muddy, filthy water. It literally looks like a melted milkshake. Not good, but as long as this little sliver of cleaner water holds out for us, we're gonna be able to put some fish in the boat because uh, we're getting towards that time of the day here now where with this amount of uh, uh, wave activity, that sun starts to get a little bit low, we're gonna catch fish here. There he is. Way you up get in those so cans. much slack in your line when you're fishing in the wind like this. <laughs> that big loop, the wind catch is tough. Feels like a walleye. You let me know if you're gonna need that net. You know, I think we're gonna be all right. We're okay. gonna be all right. Boy, he was way up tight to those reeds. You can throw an eighth ounce jig a country mile right now. You almost have to slow it down so it doesn't get so far away. You know, you have better control of it. Looks like a decent fish. Uh, it's going to be solid. I don't think it's going to be a giant. Yeah, I got this one. Won't need a net on it. Solid fish. Come here, you. Oh. James, I got a fish back here, for real. <laughs> <laughs> He's doubled up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep, beautiful fish. This is the kind of deal where, as fishermen, I'm going to let this one go. Andy might need a net. This is the kind of deal as fishermen where we're not fishing in ideal conditions. This is really pretty snotty. But uh, days like this when you don't give up, you don't head for the access, and you just kind of tough it out. Just find a way to see what you need to get on some of these bigger fish. It is so rewarding. One-hander. Well, you in got here. him. Oh, very cool. All right, let's get this fish out of the net here. Oh, well, my green and... Uh... Is it chartreuse pepper? Chartreuse pepper, Pulsar sir. is, uh, it's long gone. This fish absolutely destroyed it. And we're fishing it right now, and at most, three foot of water. And when you find walleyes in three foot of water with a windy day, uh, these suckers mean business. I mean, these take the rod out of your hand kind of bites. And there's really nothing more fun than that, is there, James? No, there is not. Do a little some surgery on it, got it out of there. That's just what we're using right there. Just the eighth ounce VMC head with that, that pulsar tail. And I think that thump in the little bit dirtier water that that tail puts off, uh, you know, is really helping those walleyes key in on our bait. So I'm gonna get this one back in. Very nice fish again, real healthy, fat, nice prairie walleyes here. We'll get him back and see if we can't get another one. All right. That was a nice little flurry, man. That was. Kind of excited to get another one here. Don't mind me. 
Oh, I love that. Kathunk. When you get those fish hit and that jig's all the way at the back of their throat, that's that's pretty much the best you could have out here fishing for these walleyes. Well, and when we're fishing the wind, you know, the, that wind makes a pretty good loop in the line. And when you mm -hmm. can feel those bites like that, even with those fish are clobbering it. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Shallow wrap shad's a jerk bait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued. fishing it so slow. I took a uh, page out of your book there, Mr. Fiolka. Hey, that is a beautiful fish. I'm just going to hand them up to you. Yeah. <laughs> just barely hooked. Boop, there we go. Such a beautiful fish. We're catching so many fish now on that plus out of 20 inches. It takes a little bit something special to start catching a fish over 20 inches, and that's what we're doing here today. Let that one go. Andy. This is becoming one of my uh, favorite days of fishing so far this year in 2016. It's a heck of a good time, I'll tell you that. Anytime you can catch walleyes on the jig up shallow, man, I'll be there every Goodbye. time. <laughs> Fish, James. Awesome. Oh, that's oh a nice fish. walleye, nice walleye. <laughs> we Thank are you, sir. stacking them up. That is a nice fish there. Kind of gnarly looking shallow fish. Thank you. A good fishing partner worth his weight in gold. Oh man, look at that one. And there it goes. Got him. I got the net for it's you. It's a good here. fish. It's a good fish. Here he comes. He's gonna. Oh come. yeah. <laughs> Johnny on the spot. Thank you. Oh, you know, Just I'm hold cute. him. Just hold him right there. There we go. Oh heck yeah. That's a beautiful walleye. Hey walleye. Off it goes. Fish. <laughs> oh, this one feels really good. Oh, if you don't mind grabbing the net for me, that'd not be not at all. Yes. <laughs> this is becoming ridiculous, Andy. Oh, thank you, sir. In a very good way. Oh man, just another chunk. I mean, these fish. It's incredible how many fish we're catching at this point in time. I mean, they are stacked up where we're fishing. And that thump of the jig in the walleye's mouth never gets old. Makes a guy happy. It makes a walleye guy happy. And I can't get that chuck. There we go. Oh, very cool. Let's get that one back. All right. And there it goes. Something I like to point out about these VMC Moon Eye jig heads that we're using is that wire plastic retainer that they have. You know, a normal lead head jig, they mold the lead down with a tiny little barb on there, and that yeah, works okay, but. You know, on days when you're catching a lot of fish, those fish have a tendency to easily pull your plastic off the head, you know, in the instance of a short bite or something like that. And these wire ones really dig into those plastic bodies and rarely ever do you have the plastic, you know, pull off the actual jig head. So uh, something really cool and they got a nice wide gap hook on them too. Just awesome jig head. So get back out there and get another one. Fish? <laughs> that cast up shallow. <laughs> right up to the weeds. Well, we've been catching them off this side of the boat and kind of ignored the inside for the longest time. And 
Figured it was about time. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's a good fish. Yep, here it comes. Good fish, good fish. Oh. Looks like he's hooked pretty good. That's a nice one. Oh. Oh. Thank you, sir. Oh, man, what a beautiful fish. If you hold the net right there, I can just grab that fish without it sinking into the bag. That's awesome. Oh, man. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to end the show right there on that walleye. We've caught more fish today than I thought ever possible, honestly. With the conditions that we were faced with, I thought we were going to really struggle. Things really came together, and I'm so happy about that. I'm going to let this fish go. Another beautiful low 20 inch walleye. All right, see you later, fish. This is what we're going to do. We're going to call an end to what has been a phenomenal day of fishing. Fantastic. You know, at the start of the show, I said I loved coming out here because of how aggressive the fish were. This, what we experienced here today, basically is like the, uh, uh, the perfect example of why I keep coming back to fish with you year after year after year at this time. Nothing better. Kind of put an exclamation point to exactly what we were looking to do. It's been phenomenal. Next week is the last episode of In-Depth Outdoors for season 10. And of course, Andy's been a big part of our season so far this year. And uh, where we're gonna go to close uh, season 10, I have no idea. But typically we close out our season in Minnesota as part of the Minnesota opener. For those that fish the opener in Minnesota, you know that the opener's late this year. So we will not be doing a Minnesota opener show. And that frees me up to go wherever I want. It's kind of a nice thing. It is a very nice thing. I want to thank you for having me out here today. Hey, thanks for coming. Phenomenal time. It's been a great day. Next year, about this time, make sure you invite me again. Absolutely. You're welcome anytime. Sounds good. We Sorry. always have a great time out in the boat, and we always put fish in the boat. So one more can you ask for? It's been a great. A good fishing partner is worth his weight in gold. So from Andy Fiolka and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Awesome. That awesome. Was fun. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.